Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made With Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'm gonna to be giving you an introduction to the Weave Arrays op. Um, so we're gonna be using this op to create a set of lines which we can then use to kind of make some generative art pieces. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna press escape and I'm gonna create a main loop op. I'm gonna pull this down. Then I'm gonna add an orbit controls. And just for once, I'm gonna add a clear color up. And I'm gonna just put this a little bit brighter. And now I'm going to get a basic material new. And I'm gonna connect a simple spline. And a simple spline is what we're gonna use to visualize the lines we're gonna create with the weave array up. Um, so I'm kind of missing a reference in 3D Spacer. So I'm going to pull out from the orbit controls. I'm going to grab the grid up. And basically, let's, let's just change this clear color, make it a little bit brighter. There we go. Just a little bit more white. Great. So we've got this grid and I'm going to put it on number four, spacing one. And I want to have like a reference where I am in 3D space for this. So I'm going to add a transform. And I'm going to put the rotation of X on 90. And then I'm just going to copy this grid up and put it here. Put this there. And now when I turn with orbit controls, as you can see, I've got like a 3D grid. So this is handy for me to know where I am in 3D space. I'll just zoom out a little touch. So um, you might want to follow some of the other tutorial videos that I made with arrays um, to follow this. If not, don't worry about it. Just pause the video if you lose track of what's going on. So I'm gonna make a continuous number array, and this gives me values ranging from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, as you can see here. And I'm just gonna create 50 values for now. And actually, let's pull out a value. That's the number of values, put it on 50. And then we're gonna grab an array, divide up. And then we're gonna divide everything in the array by the size of the array, and this will give us normalized values between zero and one, as you can see here. Great. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna grab an array, subtract, and then I'm gonna grab an array, multiply, and I'm gonna um, copy this two more times, here and here. Let's just tidy this up. So this is going to be for the X component, the Y component, and for the Z component. So I'm just going to plug this in here, this in there, and now I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to grab an array pack free. And we're going to use this to pack everything back together again. I'm just going to put that there, that there. Let's pull down the simple spline. I'm going to plug this in here, and then this needs a trigger. So actually let's use a trigger extender because I just want to keep the patch a bit tidy for now. Okay, great. So there's something there, as we can see, there's this kind of line. So we just need to fix this for a minute. So I'm going to subtract 0 0.5 so it becomes centered on the X axis. And I'm going to multiply it by two. Um, this I'm going to subtract zero. And then I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.5. And this, I'm going to subtract zero and multiply by zero. Actually, sorry, let me just do this. Put it on zero. And it's hard to see, but we've got a line right there. So the first thing I want to do is kind of introduce you to the basics of this um, op. And it's called Array 3x Transform. Because you might think, I don't see that line there right now. That's OK. So I'm going to grab Translate Y. And there's that line, right? So this line is just made out of all those points. And now let's go to simple spline and turn off line strip. And as you can see, let's just make this guy a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna multiply this by four. There we go. So as you can see, this is a line. So there's an X, Y, Z point, X, Y, Z point, and it draws a line in between. So turning line strip on and off has this kind of effect. And I just want you to be able to see what's happening there. So I can use array 3x transform here and um, I can now rotate 
all the values of the array, as you can see here. So this is going to be really handy um, for what we're going to do in a minute. So this is actually my framework to draw two sets of lines. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to grab this and press Control C, go over here, and press Control V. And now I'm just going to connect this array divide over here. Okay, I'm going to get this trigger extender. I'm going to plug it in there and I'm going to plug it in here. And now this is where the magic happens. I'm going to go here and I'm going to add the weave arrays up. Weaves two arrays together. Okay, so it expects two arrays. So this is the first one. This is the second one. So this I'm going to plug in here. So the important thing with weave arrays is um, it needs to know how big the chunk size is. So that means a chunk right now is like in the array on the left, X. So it's, it's just merging X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z, and so on. But we want to do it for each vertice, which is X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So that just basically means we need to put the chunk size on three. And you might think, I don't see anything right now. And that's correct. So look at this, what's happening. So let's, let's just try and make sense of this. So I'm going to put translate Y on one, and here I'm going to put it on minus one. So basically what's happening here right now is we've just generated a bunch of points there and a bunch of points here. So this section here is that top line. This section here is that bottom line. So we're drawing lines, right? So we're grabbing the X, Y, Z from here, and then we're weaving it with the next X, Y, Z point. And then we jump on, and we grab the next three, and we weave them together with these three, and it all becomes one array as far as the simple spline up is concerned. And you might think, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. So what can I do with this? Well, this is when we can start to do some really interesting transformations. And we can create these really cool effects and you've really got to play around with them because um, there's just so many different things that you can do with this as you can see it's kind of like this awesome 3d 2d effects there we can change the scale on x on y and z and we're gonna have a point on x and z so let's just put this back so this is like the framework for um, some other stuff that we're gonna do so as you can see We've now just been able to successfully draw lines between two um, different arrays. And if we put line strip on right now and I zoom in, you can see what's happening. Let's just lower this to say 20. And this is with line strip. So it's doing this. And if you're a little bit confused about that line at the top, that's just the grid over here. I can just put the spacing on 1.5. And this one also on 1.5, because that might have been a little bit confusing, sorry. So here we go. So if we turn off simple spline now, uh, turn off line strip, as you can see, these are our lines. So we turn on line strip, and they join like this. So this is like a really cool framework to do a lot of stuff, um, because you could like get the array from a shape with geometry points, um, with two spheres. I'm going to show that in the next video, and you could weave them together. But right now, I'm just going to show like um, another little simple thing here. So I'm going to pull out from num values and I'm going to grab a random array. And I want the minimum value to be 0 0.5 max. And as we can see, I get um, a bunch of numbers here. So let's just say I want to change the height of the bottom part here with this random array. I go here and I grab an array math op. I'm going to put this here. And then I'm going to say subtract and I'm going to plug this in. And as you can now see, we've got like these different heights over here. And this is just to show the very basic of something that we can do to start to create something that's looking a little bit generative. And you know, so we can start rotating this and getting some really crazy looking things. And like I said, this isn't the, the, the prettiest thing right now, but it's just to show like what we can do. So if I would now grab the translate X, we can move them all this way, that way. So. Let's say that I'd want to create something like um, some pendulums swinging a little bit randomly. That was kind of the idea which led to this patch. So I'm going to go over here and now I'm going to pull out another random array. And it's just to give an example of what you can do. Again, minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. 
And now I'm going to get this random array. And I'm going to grab an array math. And let me just move this here. I'm going to get that normalized coordinate set and put that in here. OK. And we're just going to add it together. That's fine. And now I'm going to grab an array sin op. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the frequency, say, on 2, amplitude on 0 0.25. Great. So now I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to put this on, say, 5.2, some arbitrary number, 0 0.5. And now I'm going to grab an array math up. And I'm going to pick multiply. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to get the normalized array and put that in here. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put that in there. And now what I want to do is I want to change the, the, the Z component forwards and backwards on the bottom. So this really isn't so difficult. I click here and I'm going to make an array math up. I'm going to put that here and I'm going to leave it on plus. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to plug that in there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pull out from phase and we're going to grab a timer 2. And I'm going to put that on 2. And then I'm going to grab a multiply up and I'm going to put it on just some different number here like 1.7. I'm going to plug that into phase. Okay, let me just zoom in a bit so you guys can see this. Move it out. So, as you can see, we've now got this kind of like pendulum effect. Could be going a little bit too quickly. Let's just turn it down a touch. So, um, wow, we've already got this like kind of like random wind-like motion. Like, I don't know, some wind chimes or something. We're only doing that on the Z um, axis. We could also do it on X, but I just want to keep it simple. And the last thing I want to do um, to show us something with this tutorial with what more is possible, um, I'm just going to pull this down. And I'm going to grab a matcap material new. I'm then going to pull out a trigger once. And then I'm going to grab a sphere two. And I'm going to pull out from the matcap material. And I'm going to make a mesh instance up. And I'm then going to plug in this right here. And it needs a position array. And for that, we're going to use the bottom one right here. I'm going to plug that into positions. I'm going to click trigger once and reset. And as you can see, everything is way too big now. So let's put this uh, radius on, say, 0 0.1 and do trigger once again. And as you can see, we've now got these kind of like pendulums there. Uh, which are kind of like swinging in the wind, to say it that way. So this was a kind of um, basic tutorial with the weaver rays up and uh, some of the little tricks that we could do with it with some lines. This is the first part of a, an ongoing series where I'll be showing how we can do more with the geometry points uh, up and how we can use actual geometry and weave those together to create some really interesting stuff. I know this is pretty simple and it's the basics, but hopefully it's enough to give you guys a framework for the rest that's going to come. Hope this video has been educational educational and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.